you know, when it comes to NHL executives that I would not want to take on in a fight, Mark Bergevin is up there, that guy's biceps go on for ages. That would be a very difficult experience. Steve Eiserman is there for sure. And you know who else is kind of in that conversation as well? Jarmo Kekalainen. So I'm going to go out there and apologize because when it comes to Kekalainen talking about what it is that ticks him off the most, I have sort of been guilty in perpetrating that idea forward in the media, mostly because... There have been so many rumors and trade discussions going on about Patrick Laine, Columbus Blue Jackets star, that we've made a few videos about it over the past few months. Now, the recent video on this channel was talking about the revival of Patrick Laine and how those rumors are not really a thing anymore because he's been so good that everybody kind of feels like the Blue Jackets just want to keep him around now, but Jarmo Kekalainen went out there on an interview with Pierre Lebrun and The Athletic, and pretty much shared what he feels about the entire thing that's been going on here. So, this article is our source from March 2nd, 2022. Pierre Lebrun, the Blue Jackets GM, Yarmulke Kalainen, on the trade deadline, as well as Patrick Laine's future. Now, this is on The Athletic, so we're not going to go ahead and screenshot this, but we're going over onto NHLTradeRumors.me because an article on this website, which is not behind a paywall, summarizes the quotes that Kekalainen had. Columbus Blue Jackets GM pissed off over Patrick Laine trade rumors. And yes, the title of this article is hyperbolized a little bit, which is why I tried to tone it back in the title and thumbnail of this video that you're watching right now. Kekalainen mentioned that he is bothered by all the noise, and he had this to say to Pierre Lebrun. Yeah, it bothers me because people make up crap, we'll say that instead. That's what bothers me. I understand that sometimes, from conversations you have with teams, some of it may leak out and a name gets in there, but this is not a case like that. This is just somebody making blank up from their own speculation of what we might do. They make it up and hope for the headlines and hope for the clicks. I think that's unethical, and I don't have any time for it. Now, while I don't disagree and I don't want to make it seem like he's wrong that some NHL analysts and insiders might do that when it comes to making up headlines and making up material for their articles and whatnot. I'll go out there and defend myself here on this hill because every time we had made a video about Patrick Laine, it had all been because of something else somebody else said in the media beforehand. Like, we had ourselves Aaron Portslin with the quotes from the Blue Jackets coach talking about how Laine fell off, which is why we made the video talking about how Laine fell off. It's funny because he immediately got back on his horse after that video was made, and he had the run that he has had recently where he's had like two points a game for a few weeks now or something. It's crazy how good that guy has been. But every time we had talked about Line A, and I make a very good point about this every time we make these videos, is that we always talk about him because of something else. We always talk about whoever it is because some other NHL person made an article or they had a radio hit or they made a social media post talking about ideas that we eventually recycle into this content over here. That's what this channel is. It's a conversation piece. It's me going out there scouring the NHL world for news and rumors and ideas and just talking to you as if I'm talking to a friend at the coffee table. That's kind of how the vibe is on this channel and I really do try to uphold that specific type of conversation. So there you go. That's my defense for Yarma Kekalainen. Please don't beat me up. Please don't be ticked off with me in particular. The article then talks about Patrick Laine, RFA. He's got himself a good season, $7.5 million, etc., etc. This is what Kekalainen said about the negotiations with Patrick Laine. When the time is right, we're going to sit down and we're going to look at all the options together and see if we can come to a solution that he will stay for us for a term that fits the need of both sides, and for the dollars that meet the needs of both sides too. Let's see if there's a marriage that we can get into, and if not, you know, that's hockey. I always say, every player that gets into the time frame when they can become UFAs, they can do that if they want to and there's not much we can do about it. And so, while Kekalainen has gone out there and stated how ticked off he is that Patrick Laine trade rumors keep popping up, he also said towards the end of the piece that if there is no re-signing, if there is no bringing him back, then what can we do? 
Patrick Line, if you go over to the entire thing right here, there's also another article that I wanted to highlight from Emily Kaplan on ESPN. NHL trade notes and rumors, what we're hearing about Giordano, DeBrusque, Flurry, and more. There is indeed a focus on Line in this article that is a lot more positive. If you wanted to go out there and say Kekka Line's ticked off about the trade rumors, well, he's going to be happy about this one. Emily Kaplan writes, shut down the Patrick Line trade rumors. It does not seem like the Finnish sniper is going anywhere before March 21st. He's finally looking like his most dangerous self again for Columbus, a team playing extremely hard, trying to sneak into the playoffs. Okay, now sneak in. That's a very liberal verb right there, Emily. The Blue Jackets likely have not approached Line with any meaningful contract talks yet. Okay, there you go. That's kind of confirming what Kekalainen said in the previous article, but that does not mean they don't see a future with him. This is something that is expected to be resolved over the summer. The team seems happy with what they have seen from Line, who struggled to begin the season mourning the death of his father while dealing with an abdominal injury. And he is expected to have talks with the team to find a solution for a new deal, though there doesn't seem to be a rush right now. The Blue Jackets forward more likely to move is Alexandre Texier, and we cannot talk about that even more. We haven't made a video about that yet, but... Man, Alexandre Texier, I do like that guy a lot. I'm not too sure if people remember this, but we did make a video about Texier like a few years ago when he debuted, talking about how this guy was really good. But either way, we'll probably have to talk about him as the trade deadline approaches, because yeah, I didn't realize that Texier would be the guy that picks up the baton in terms of... Columbus Blue Jackets trade rumors heading towards the deadline, but Patrick Line, go over to his profile right here. His point log has kind of cooled down a little bit. In his past five games, he only has five points this time, as opposed to like 11, and he's got 14 points in his last 10. Total on the season, though, 38 and 35 games. He is over a point per game and on pace for 30 goals in a shortened season. Do the math on this right here. 20 divvy 35 multiplied out by 82. Patrick Line over the span of a full 82 game year is on pace for 47 goals, which would be a career high. Now, if you go out there and re-sign this player, you probably see him fulfill that next year because the body of success that he has shown off in the NHL the past few weeks here I think it's super indicative of what we could see or what we will see out of Line a once he actually settles in. Because, I mean, he's only 22 years old. You got her, or 23 years old, turning 24, excuse me. He's still got so much time to develop and become better and do all this stuff. Heck, if I was Yara Kekalainen, and I would want to keep this guy too, and I'd be ticked off about the rumors as well. It's just so funny to me how we had all these trade rumors back at the beginning of the year when this guy was struggling, and they were kind of coming from everywhere. I think we had a few from the fourth period, we had some from a few radio hits as well, and we would eat those video topics up like candy because, yeah, I mean, Patrick Laine is still a budding NHL star. He's still got so much potential, and so seeing him form into what he has become with the Blue Jackets, this is ultimately the best case scenario. Like, you want to see these young guys go out there and do well. You want to see these players rebound from what are very bad life tragedies and injuries and just overall tribulations that hold them back from being themselves. And for Patrick Laine, that's what we have seen. The past few weeks have been fantastic for the guy, and if this is an indicator of what we're going to see more out of the next few years, then absolutely be my guest. I want to see this continue. I want to see Patrick Laine resign. I want to see Patrick Laine go out there in a place where he is comfortable because... Let's face it, if he gets traded again, there's probably going to be another coaching dilemma or another thing that goes on with his deployment and ice time because Patrick Line is such a unique kind of player that you can't just plug this guy in and play. You really need to work with the coaching staff and give him a role where he's comfortable with and... There are so many specific parts of that that cannot be fulfilled immediately, so... Patrick Line sticking around at Columbus, it might just very well be for the best. Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Yarmar Kekalainen and the comments that he made about Line and about how he's ticked off about all the crap that goes on in the trade rumor world because everybody's saying, oh, Patrick Line this, Patrick Line that, trade, trade, trade. I'm guilty of that as well, but I'll defend myself once again that yes, we only made those videos because other people were talking about it. That's kind of what this entire channel is. We make videos about hockey games and we make videos about trade rumors or things that other people are talking about in the hockey world because, yeah, conversational, right? That's just kind of how I want to do this channel, and it's how I've been doing it. 
since like 2017, 2016, something like that. So let me know in the comments like your thoughts about Kekalainen, Line A, a trade. Do you want this guy to re-sign? Do you think he's going to get traded? What do you think the number is going to be if he does re-sign? Or actually, no, not if he does re-sign. He will re-sign. He'll re-sign with an NHL team at the very least. Whether or not that's Columbus, we'll see in the next few months. But the number, what is Patrick Line's number going to be? Let me know in the comments like your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.